It was a concept that started with the idea of having a dinner party instead of a fashion show and just inviting friends um, to wear the clothes to a dinner party. Um, and that just sort of just replaced the idea of a show. Um, seeing how the clothes translate to real, you know, real people, friends of the brand. And uh, it sort of escalated a little bit from there and just became more and more layered as we uh, started working with different people and it sort of snowballed into a kind of multifaceted concept with AI and music and light and uh, all sorts of other things, performance. And I don't really know what it's gonna look like, but it's, it, <laughs> I guess that's the fun of it. We have a few, we um, Tarek, uh, Barry's doing the lights, um, Nigel's, done some of the music, Tom York's that supplied one of the soundtracks, Christine Jones has been you know integral to the sort of curating the experience and the theatrical side of the night, uh, Ignacio doing the food um, with Tamar, uh, who else, Aaron has put the whole thing together, um, Aaron Duffy, um, and Damien on the choreography, did I mention him already? Probably not, I've got to get my list straight for the night. Um, it's, it, it started with a couple, it started with Christine, and then it, we added Nigel, and then we added Tarek, Tamar, Ignacio, I mean, it just it sort of snowballed into, you know, like I said, it was multifaceted, and we were just trying to explore how, you know, how a dinner party could evolve out of a sort of normal fashion dinner party, which, you know, can be fun, but it's not often that, that impactful, memorable, and uh, yeah, here we are. I mean, it's, they started with the conversation about how to, how to capture the night um, on video because it was obviously a dinner party and it, no one wants to watch a video, video of a two hour dinner party. And uh, so we talked about LiDAR capturing the clothes in 3D uh, and then the AI idea came into it and we started like, exploring how AI could interact with the dinner party. And then it just sort of brought, brought up the inevitable conversation about the advancement of technology and the eventual potential singularity um, and so, in, you know, we call it the Last Supper, I guess, for a few reasons, but I guess the most obvious is it's the, the, the Last Supper before the singularity. Um, but it, you know, it was, uh, I don't know, it just felt like a cool name, quite honestly. Technology is like, it's an, it's an inevitable part of our future, and it's, um, it's gain, gaining an immense amount of pace in terms of how, how impactful it is on all aspects of our lives. On fashion, obviously, hasn't had a, a massive impact beyond Instagram, the internet, and all of that kind of thing. Um, but the idea of AI, virtual reality, and all those things—it's—it's—it's it's, it's inevitable that that, like I said, will impact all aspects, including including fashion. I don't know that we're necessarily exploring a specific way that AI will interact with fashion with this, but we do, we do feel like it's, it has not been done before as far as I know, this kind of thing, or this, this sort of set up. So it'll be interesting to see how intelligent artificial intelligence actually is. Can it recognize clothes? Can it recognize color? Can it, can it speak to what is going on in, in front of it? Because that, as far as I understand, is exactly what it's going to try and do. Um, and you can imagine a a future, um, as I mean, as we've seen in millions of films, where this thing really is truly intelligent, um, and will have a you know a huge impact on how we interact with with fashion. I think. At the end of the day, though, um, with that said, I think the point of the night was to highlight the beauty of an an a purely analog experience, like a dinner party between friends between people, is something that I hope no AI will ever be able to reproduce. And, and it was that contrast, I think, that we were interested in. Um, can an AI learn from that? Maybe that was one part of it, but I think, you know, in a day, in a day and age when, in, certainly in fashion shows, most people are watching a fashion show through their telephone. Um, that intimate analog experience with the clothes right up in front of you seems to be waning a, a little bit, certainly in my opinion, um, and the dinner party with everyone in the clothes just felt like a novel way of, of exploring, a, another way of showing clothes more than anything else. Yeah, we worked with uh, Aaron, I guess it was last year, on a film called Why Can't We Get Along, um, 
And he's like he's a magician when it comes to, I mean, if you have the most complicated, impossible idea in the world that you need someone to organize and try and figure out how to do, he's, he's the guy. He just has a, a beautiful brain when it comes to thinking about things differently and thinking holistically. It's super fluid in his thinking, like I'm quite, you know, ignorantly opinionated, shall we say. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I have an opinion on what something should look like. Um, and he he just lets me talk, and you know he humours me a little bit, and uh, he's just one of he's just amazing to work with, and super creative, and just comes up with these things that we you know any normal human being could never come up with, and then in his ability to put it together, like why can't we get along? He came up with the idea of the camera rigs, um, which was just like a massive part of the whole thing. So. Yeah, when it came to this, and like, how, how do we make a dinner party really random and really memorable, Aaron seemed like the guy to sort of mine for ideas. Fashion shows are fantastic, and they, we enjoy doing fashion shows for a long time. And they're an incredibly effective and powerful way of getting a message across each season. But for us, it just didn't necessarily feel like we were challenging ourselves every season when it came to doing a fashion show. and we. We've always been a brand that likes to sort of explore other ways of doing things and so we stopped doing them and I think we, we just completely flipped to the other side rather than dressing people and telling them you wear this, you wear this, you wear this and sending them down a runway. Dressing real people is completely different, it's completely different. They have to feel very comfortable, they have to look like themselves, um, they have to feel special in the clothes and it teaches you a lot and so the way you design changes when it when you do it like that um, and we'll, I don't think I don't know I'll never say I will never do another fashion show but for right now I love you know it's really fun it's very stressful exploring these other things because you have to come up with a completely new idea every single season but uh, they're fun to do I mean I don't know ask me at the end of the night whether I'll be going back to fashion shows, I don't know. I think the, the guests that we've invited are very similar to the people we've collaborated with. They're people that were friends of ours, friends of the brand. Um, people have been wearing Rag & Bone for a long time. Uh, and if they're not people that we really know, they're people that we've asked people to come who we really admire um, for the way they look at life. And I think our philosophy is to try and work with truly original talent, whether that's behind the camera, in front of the camera, people that bring something that we don't have to the table. When it comes to sort of curating the guest list for a dinner party, you have to think about it the same way. So you just put, you've got to think about the fact that it's a dinner party. You've got to imagine whether it's, um, you know, at, a, at an event space or at your own house, you've got to try and curate a list of people that are going to get on. Um, so it sort of builds. So we started with Nigel and some of his friends, Paul Thomas Anderson is coming. Um, Oscar Isaac um, is coming, he's the two guys that I know pretty well, um, friends of theirs and then they know this person and it's this sort of sequence of events and you end up with, somehow you end up with 60 people. Um, like I said, Emma, Emma Roberts is um, coming tonight which is really exciting because we just worked with her in um, the last film that we did, Lakeith, who we also worked with, who else? I don't know, I'm sitting next to my wife, that's the most important one. It takes a long time. I mean, this idea has taken at least six months to try and figure out. It starts with a couple of different things and it just evolves. It just morphs into, into something. So as of now, I have not a single clue as to what we would do in September, if we're going to do anything in September at all. I've known Christine for a long time. She's a friend of mine and a really good friend of my wife's. How did I meet Christine? I can't remember how I met Christine, long time ago. And I'd never worked with her. Um, and we were just friends. Spent a lot of time at Glastonbury together. And, uh, and then I woke up one morning, one Saturday morning, and I was like, because we were heard some other idea, and I can't remember what it was, but it didn't, it didn't feel like a good idea. And I was like, why don't we just do a dinner party? And we'll just invite people. And Christine is someone who can create these incredible theatrical sort of environments and situations. And, uh, so I just gave her a call. I said, would you be up for doing a dinner party? The whole point of working with, with people like this is that they're inspiring and you have to let them do what they do. Like, I'm not sitting here going, do this, do that, do that. It's not directed by Rag and Bone. This, this is, 
directed by the people collaborating on it. And everyone brings something very special to the table, to the event. And that's the beauty of it. Like, we're not dictating what's happening. My name is Christine Jones, and I'm a theater artist. I direct, I design, I work on Broadway, I do opera, immersive experiences, sort of a, a range of work in theater. And I'm also a friend of Marcus's. And he called me up one Saturday morning and said, hey, Christine, I've got this idea. I want to create an immersive, crazy dinner party. Can you help me? I was, you know, paused a moment and thought about, well, you know, usually we build those sorts of things over months and months of writing and workshops and rehearsals. So the idea of capturing it within a few days on a more fashion week kind of schedule was, I will admit, rather intimidating. But we decided to jump in and it's been an amazing collaboration. So we've pulled together a group of all kinds of artists, musicians, choreographers, designers, performers, to make, hopefully, just a really good time and a fun dinner party. I mean, I was really excited to be invited to collaborate with Rag and Bone. I've always loved the clothes, I've been to some of the shows, and been curious and tantalized about the idea of, you know, what happens if you start to bend and turn on its head what a fashion show is. So it's something I secretly wanted to do, and when Marcus invited me, it felt like the perfect opportunity. And, you know, of course the clothes are inspiring. And then as we started putting together all the pieces of the puzzle, the space, which you'll see, is incredible. And working with some people we'd worked with before and, you know, riffing on work that we've done in the past and taking it to a different level and incorporating these different collaborators has been really what's been inspiring, is just working with new people, with people you're familiar with, and, you know, literally creating a meal. So it's a meal of, of food and ingredients, but it's also a meal of fashion and movement and ideas, and especially the collaboration with artificial intelligence, which was something that I had never interacted with before. And it's been really educational and cool and unexpected, and we're making it all happen, you know, as, as, we, uh, as we just kind of figure it out together. Tamara Adler, who is a gorgeous food writer and chef, was one of the first collaborators to come on board. As soon as Marcus said I wanted to do a dinner party, I thought, okay, we have to call Tamar. So we just started talking, and, and Marcus said, you know, what if it's a supper, a last supper? And Tamar had the thought, like, okay, last supper, what if it's the last supper before the singularity? And this Ross, you know, Aaron jumped in and said, oh, Ross, he's working with us because we're creating this this music video piece at the end, we're already using AI, so what if we actually took that collaboration one step further and deepened it and integrated it more into the process? So, you know, a supper is a ritual, and uh, it's a combination of ritual, but party, um, you know, what, what is a last supper? We've just been tossing all of these ideas around, and particularly learning about what the singularity is. And it does seem like, on some level, some collaboration with AI is inevitable in our future. And what we've learned along the way is that humans do have the ability to encode and train and imbue this future AI with the, with the qualities that we hope it has. So um, we've all been experimenting around those ideas. We will be working with a rudimentary artificially intelligent machine who will be learning what a dinner party is, will be learning how to name itself, will be observing the ritual and the supper and the party of what we're doing and starting to put language together with it. We'll be seeing it watch us, we'll be seeing it process information through words and through information that it will be getting from the guests. And hopefully we'll see it learn over the course of the evening. What I'm wearing tonight is Rag and Bone Fall Winter Collection. It's uh, a gorgeous pantsuit and some awesome shoes and I'm absolutely thrilled. I'm just, I'm just most excited to see it all come together. Like I said earlier, I usually have weeks and months to build something. When I work on an opera, we spend two years creating it. So to actually start on a Monday and have an event happen on a Friday with so many moving parts is uh, totally exciting. I have a kind of adrenaline and butterflies rushing through my body that I am not accustomed to. So I'm excited to see how it all plays out. And I just hope everybody has a really good time. I usually don't really do kind of events, but I was 
seduced by the originality of it and also by the collaborators that were involved into it. Um, some of them I, I already had collaborated with Tom on a previous project and I found it always exciting to, I always find it exciting to, to work again with him. I choreographed the film Suspiria, the Discord, so we already were involved in defining an atmosphere, a world, uh, something that, I mean, I, I, I also like the fact that this project had something that was a bit like a ceremony and there was something that was connected to something really traditional and maybe ancient to something pretty futuristic or at least bringing all this idea of artificial intelligence. And um, since it's really about artificial, since about, I w um, for me, I always find it, find it interesting when you connect, can connect the bodies to such, such ideas. So, um, yeah, I, I was especially uh, interested in learning how the artificial intelligence learns from you. In a way, it's very similar than the way you teach your routine, a dance routine. You activate your mirror neurons and you just basically copy, learn, uh, mirror someone. So we, we create that kind of choreography that is not really dancey, but like mostly like it's very gestural. And the complexity is not in the movement themselves, but in, in the memorizing all the, the intricate detail for a very long period. Um, and so we, like a kind of an exchange of data. And uh, we, yeah, it was very challenging. I like challenging stuff. So we're doing something that on the track of seven minutes, we have three, four days to work on with people I've never worked before. Uh, Emilio Sarapoglu, the dancer that I work a lot with, came with me and we created that routine uh, together. Uh, some elements that actually taken from a piece called Babel I did with Sidi Rabi back in time. So these very gestural, very precise movements. Uh, it's very, yeah, it, you could feel like the smoke going out of the ears of the dancers as they were learning it. But uh, yeah, it's been fun. Actually, the dancers bring you, bring the guests, the plate first. They, they start with that. And eventually, the whole thing evolves from accumulation of them to a place where they merge and then conversation happened like it's a kind of physical conversation that happened right in between the table so it's first peripheric frontal and then it goes inside and then some part of the choreography an element of it gets transmitted to the guests who are then invited to participate so it's a kind of a it's a journey I mean definitely this idea that we are the, the idea of mirroring the idea of um, of programming the idea of connection and oppositions how uh, the magic that can come out of this and, and the idea of synchronicity, the idea of somehow software, like something that we are all could, we somehow, we can program each other. We can, we have this faculty of bringing a lot of different ideas together in a very, in, in a very condensed time. So I guess that was the departure point of the choreography. It's something that, yeah, it's, it's a very, it's very mental, but it's also something I would say, and it's dancers gaze a lot into each other's eyes, so the information also is gets transmitted. There's something feeling that gets transmitted from doing that. It's quite trippy for them. Actually, it's very hard for them to gaze also in the audience because they have to really get all these details on the road for quite a long period. Any project that brings different artists together, I just always love the idea of merging different disciplines. My work is only about that. I work with visual artists, with musicians. I, I work in different fields from movie to um, theater. Sometimes I, I, I just think we make the best out of things when we, we find this common place. And sometimes having a very short time frame uh, to do so, it it's, uh, brings sometimes the best of people. I just. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do believe a lot in this idea of, of um, connections and, and cre I believe creativity and things comes out of that from this, this merging, merging mind. And when technology can enhance that feeling and just kind of even present us a mirror of that in a way, it's, 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 I, found it, I found it interesting. You, you stay intuitive and then you try to go for the first the first feeling, since often is the best way to work, I feel. I mean, not for everything, 
but for something like this, it's what I enjoyed a lot in the idea of working with Christine also is the fact that she really remains open and it's a collaboration. So we, we develop this together and, and we, the conversations push, push the thing and, and, and create what you're going to see tonight.